Hi, this is Di, and I'm going to talk to you today about my basses. Yes, I have played electric bass since 1981, before most of you were born. I thought today I would show you my bass rig, and I'd start with the actual basses that I play. I have three, and so I thought I'd share them with you today. And you could see uh, what the rig is that I have. I'm a bass player. I played for four years in high school and then I put it away and had my kids and my life and I was singing with the uh, worship team that we had for children's ministries at church and uh, we got a new director and she came in and said, all you vocalists, I don't need you. I need musicians so you guys don't need to come back. It was basically like that. She said, unless you play an instrument. So that was time. It's time to dust the bass out of the attic. And this is the bass I dusted off. This is the uh, Fender Music Master. It is a short scale bass in black, in basic black, the black pick guard. And it has the rosewood fretboard. And you can see the back here a little bit. The keys up here for tuning um, have not stood the test of time. They've gotten this sort of discolored look about them, which is probably cool to somebody somewhere now. So like with all short scale basses, this bass has a single pickup, and this is the single pickup. This is the thumb rest. You've got the volume here and the tone here. The volume, usually on a bass this small, you just jack it all the way up. And the tone on this particular bass has pretty much absolutely no effect. So it's this there for looks. But this is the bass that I started out on and um, this is the one I played in jazz band. Uh, my mom bought it for me at the music store where I was taking flute lessons. The Music Master Fenders, as best as I know, they are out of production. I remember we paid $320 for it and that included the case. The case has since given up its ghost. I'm on the next case. Um, this one I actually keep in a gig bag. This bass, after I was not playing for a while, my brother-in-law, who was a gigging bass player at that time in a band, he took this bass with him and it was his backup bass. If something happened to his bass during the set, he could turn to this bass and he would have something to play if he should uh, have something go out. This bass did go out on me once. At one point, some wires came unconnected inside the body of it on my way to a gig. So it ended up being soldered. So these aren't the original solders. Some people are always like, got to be careful. All the original solders are in there and they're not. We, it had to be re-soldered at one point. And it did take a really horrendous fall. In high school, I was standing in the band room. Rehearsal was at 6 a.m. I did not have this strap. I had this strap that came with it. So it had the strap that had the fender, it would say fender, and then it'd have the head of the vase and the fender, and anyway. So that was the, the strap I had, it came with it. And I was standing like this, and all of a sudden I heard a bang, and the strap had just given out, and the base was face down on the floor, which is really not good. It's not good for the base, it's not good for the person who owns it, it's kind of heartbreaking. It cracked this pick guard, so this is a replacement pick guard that I'd be put on. And you can tell because like it has a hole where we don't have a hole in the base. So that's a problem. Down here, I you know did the only thing a reasonable human being can do is I colored in with black Sharpie. But it does have a pretty good nick out of it. Um, but that's all the damage really. I think this has gotten banged around a little bit over the years, but it's not too bad, especially considering it was going to some heavy metal gigs and it never got really beat up. Now they sell them that way, already distressed. You can see this is kind of banged up. And then the back, I was generous and shared it with a freshman bass player when I was in high school and he would wear zippers. So mostly the zippers and buttons have gotten the back too, but you know, they sell them this way now. So if I had it to do over again, and I still might do it, I might just take some sandpaper and sand all this down so it just looks all beat and rugged. Cause that, that's a look now, right? Like holes in your jeans. I mean, you buy them with holes now. So that is a thing. So that is my Fender Music Master Bass. 
I quit playing it. It is my rehearsal base. I play it at home for all of my practices. I usually play on Sunday either at the main service or in the high school service. I play in both. And so this will be the base that I practice on all week. Um, I just I keep it handy. Now, Caleb, my son, has been taking it to rehearsals. So he's been rehearsing with it now for about three or four months. And so this base gets put into use for that. All right. So this was a 19... I got it in 1982, so it's probably an 81 uh, Fender Music Master. Short scale. Oh, and I wanted to show you the bridge. So this is the bridge on the bass. You see this bar? This is really the weak link on this bass, is that this bar holds two strings and this bar holds two strings. So you can always get one set right and the other one's gonna sound like crud. So that was one of my frustrations with this bass and I, I talked about replacing the bridge but they said you don't do that in a 1982 bass you keep it the way it is that was why I gave this up as my main gigging bass I could never get the E to stay in tune and it probably had something to do with how poorly this was I've had it set up over and over again and the E is just wobbly it's just really wobbly since my story about dropping it I thought I'd mention that um, the way around that is something called strap lock and so this is a strap lock that I got for this set. You do have to actually drill into the base to put the locks in, but then you never have to worry about dropping again. Also, if you want to pretend you're in Fallout Boy and swing your base all the way around you, you don't have to worry about it coming unlocked. The strap I bought more recently, this was like five years ago, and it shows nowhere because really it's not being worn outside the house very much. But, you know, it's obviously a really heavy duty kind of seat belt type strap. And I bought that because I was going to a gig and playing my other bass and thought this would be the perfect backup bass should something go wrong. We were gonna be away from society. <laughs> we're away from anywhere where I could buy strings and this does take short scale strings. I have, these are regular round wound strings. Um, I did once have it uh, with nylon wound strings. So that gave it another tone, but uh, generally, it's a good working bass. I just moved on. So I keep that bass for practice. I probably always will. It'll be my practice bass because I just love it. So this is my current bass, my gigging bass that I play now. It is a Fender Mustang bass. This is a reissue. I got it in 2004 for the reissue of the 1964 Fender Mustang bass. Um, once again with the rosewood fret board. The pick guard's a different shape on this one. I got excited because of the two pickups and I automatically thought, ooh, humbuckers, it won't hum. I'm completely wrong. It's just for looks. Really doesn't make any difference. Um, still have the hum problem that you have with these small bodies like you would on a Stratocaster guitar. It again has two knobs, and, but in this case, both of them actually work. So that's nice. Obviously, I leave it cranked all the way up when I'm playing it. And then this seems to be just here, you know, what to me is three o'clock seems to be the right place to get the tone that I want. Now, the bridge. The bridge is completely different. As you can see, each string gets its own support. And so this bridge is much better. Plus, it goes through. So the strings start on this side and go through the body of the bass and up and over, which means it actually takes medium strings, even though it is a short scale bass, because they have to start on the back of the bass. And so it's a nice bass for um, all the gigs that I have. And so I previously showed you my pedal board in my unboxing video when I was trying to beat the hum. I'll put a link, an I. Yes, yeah, so I'll put an eye in the sky so you can see that video. And I'll go through it again because I've updated it. But this is about my bases. So this is my base I gig with now all the time. I did get the strap locks for it. It's not going anywhere. And to fight the hum, I did have the guitar. We have a local guitar shop here called Tommy's Guitars. And I had him take the pick guard off and line everything in copper. So it's all copper lined there. I had trouble a lot with uh, Edison bulbs. <laughs> they like to put Edison bulbs in the setup and inevitably it would pick up the bulbs, but it's doing a lot better. The, that makes a difference and I use an insulated cord. So that makes a good difference. So you can see it's very similar. I have a hard case for this one. Here I was playing on Easter 
and I was playing in the third, fourth, and fifth grade service, as well as in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade service. Now, how do you play in two services in one day? <laughs> you literally run from one stage to the other stage. They had the music first for the third through fourth graders. They had the sermon first for the sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. So we swapped and went sermon for, for playing. So I ran across and I hit a door. <laughs> So this is me hitting the door, running to play my bass in two places. Should have set up the other bass on one stage and one on the other, but I hadn't quite thought that through. I didn't know I'd be running between stages. So I didn't quite uh, balance that the way I should have. But it has a good tone. Everybody likes to pick it up and play with it, especially guys who have great big, huge basses. They love to pick it up and look at it and play with it. Um, it's, a, it's a fan favorite, I've got to say. The color... I kind of still uh, about the color, which is funny since I've had it since 2004. This is the white, which is really an ivory. That was one of the options. It only came in one other color, and that was burnt red. I kind of wish I'd gone with the burnt red because it's a lot cooler, except for that I wear purple and stuff on stage, and so burnt red wouldn't look so good with purple. I did get the strap locks for it. Oh, and it did take a fall recently. Just a few weeks ago, I had it on one of those spindly guitar stands. It was sitting like this, and the whole stand gave out, and the whole bass fell forward. Thankfully, it fell onto the strings. Um, it got a little bit of black off the stage on one side and a little bit of black off the other, but it was otherwise unscathed. So far, so good. No problems. I'm glad for it. Uh, after the fall, everyone ran and looked at it to make sure it was okay. And the drummer that I have, he walked over and he said, oh no, Cecilia fell. And everybody said, who's Cecilia? And he said, that's the name of her bass. So ever since the fall, my bass has had the name Cecilia. So this is Cecilia. Uh, this is my third and final bass. This is my Ibanez Acoustic. So you can see the Ibanez logo here. You see the fretboard, and you can see that it is an acoustic bass, so it looks much like a guitar, but bigger. And on this side, it has a belt-in uh, belt tuner and a belt built-in equalizer. And you have volume control here. Um, it is full scale, not short scale like my other basses. However, Ibanez has a technology that's um, exclusive to them that they build the necks with and therefore the neck is a lot thinner than it would be on another bass and so I'm able to reach make the long reach because I don't have to reach my hand as far as I would if the neck was thicker I bought this at a time that I was playing a lot of acoustic gigs and like living room shows and so it seemed like the perfect base for that i really wanted it we were playing at the beach too so it was really nice for playing at the beach but the confession is i don't ever 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 play this bass anymore you know life happens while you're doing all of this and so life happened my daughter's boyfriend really took to this bass he played it a lot and they're broken up now so So my association with this bass is not as good as it was. It just doesn't make me happy anymore. It did when I bought it and it just doesn't now. And I just don't have any opportunity to play it. I tried playing it once in our um, main sanctuary at church and it just really was ringy. Like it would ring in through the amp. And it's just not my thing. So if you'd like to buy this base. It will be for sale. Contact me in the comments. I will message you and let you know how much it goes for. I bought this base more recently and I know exactly how much it's worth. So I'd love to talk to you about that. But it's pretty. Look at that. I mean, it's really a really a beautiful instrument. Oh, and do you have any questions? Please, I would love to hear your questions. So please, in the comments, leave me any questions you have about my bases. Do you play bass? Do you play a musical instrument? I would love to hear about it. Leave it down in the comments below. I answer every comment. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. God bless.